with other speakers and media? I definitely want people to, to just, you know, whenever I have a free time, come and pull me by the sleeve. And, and especially if, if you have a deep tech startup and, and you, you're building something really cool that then you have a, a good IP portfolio around you, then, then you, should, you should definitely come and talk. Come and talk to Pontus and also let's just talk more. Let's meet new people today at Arctic 15. Thank you very much for this interview and I wish you a great time at the end of the event. Thank you. So this is Arctic 15 uh, Stockholm. We are doing the second day recordings and we have invited to our improvised studio. Okay, let's be honest, it's a corner in the middle room. We have invited one more speaker who just came out of stage. Um, that was an interesting panel. That was a great discussion. Thank you very much for having time for this interview, Aline. Uh, probably we'll start with the classical thing. Could you please introduce yourself to our listeners? Thank you for the invitation <laughs> to join the podcast. My name is Aline Tsantzabel, and I'm a microbiologist and bioengineer and founder of uh, Yogatme, which is a company that is creating a sci- science-based way, a solution to deliver functional ingredients through foods. Uh, I'm a gut hacker, and I love uh, cooking foods with microbes, and that was actually what helped uh, or what, uh, what, what inspired me to create yoga to me. All right, so you're uh, not a ex-business student, you're a microbiologist. Yeah. How crazy was it for you to step from research into the startup world? It has been a big change because, I mean, it's a complete different mindset and a complete different way of working from working like developing knowledge and science and then trying to find the commercial application for that science. Uh, So it has been an exciting journey. I started my business two years ago and uh, since then it has been a very learnful uh, experience together with my team. All right, and you were part of the Deep Tech panel, right? Um, Could you please elaborate a bit more first about what your startup is? So, uh, our startup, we are creating a smart consumer appliance, a smart device to produce personalized functional foods on demand. Uh, It's kind of an espresso for yogurt, we can say this way, that we enable the production of uh, plant-based dairy alternatives containing uh, probiotics and prebiotics, which is much better to our health, very fresh, and also to our planet. So, you produce exactly what you need and uh, and the personalization is based both in your personal uh, nutritional needs but also based on your taste the type of uh, imagine if you could customize your yogurt based on uh, how you like it more acidic more creamy and so on all right that sounds interesting for me as a uh, huge fan of dairy products actually i would have tried that have you met other interesting people during arctic 15 have you had time to, we'll, we'll go back to your stage time, but have, how was your experience about the event? It has been a great event indeed. Like I met a lot of interesting people, a lot of investors, which is not so common in uh, startup events. It's a rate of more, uh, much more investors than startups and so on. And, um, and the startups that are here too, very interesting. The other two, two that were presenting at the Deep Tech panel, super, super interesting. And uh, it's been... All right. So how did the panel go? What was the topic and what was your point in it? Yes. So we are talking about how to build lean Deep Tech startups. So Deep Tech startups are startups that are based in uh, high tech uh, so they have a much longer product cycles. It's a completely different dynamics from building a software uh, lean startup. And um, therefore, it's much more challenging, much more risky to build deep tech. And, um, and our take uh, was, like one big take was the, to include the, think about the consumer, um, the user case or the application of your technology from this beginning of the development of your new product, of your new technological product, because one a big problem that deep tech companies or academic-based uh, 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 spin-offs is that they focus too much in the knowledge, in the technology, and forget that 
for it to be commercially uh, viable, it needs to have uh, commercial value. So in some cases, it ends up being a company that has a solution that needs to be looking for a problem to be solved. So it's important to understand the different scenarios or different cases that this, the technology can be used and uh, from the beginning of your development. Do you think that events like Arctic 15 or any startup events can be also used for validation your product and getting some feedback? Definitely. It gives a lot of exposure. Like Being on stage here gave uh, a lot of exposure, not only today, but even before the event. I got a lot of contacts through the... Um, the meeting room platform that is the the digital platform for the um, for the Arctic 15, and uh, and it opened opportunities both for yeah, fundraising like we will soon be uh, raising our our first round, uh, but also for partners, and so so it's very valuable to join uh, events like Arctic 15. All right. That was actually a quite interesting track, deep tech track this time because they're mostly into biology this time at least the, my, my feeling I was expecting more I don't know some laser rocket science <laughs> but it was like yeah let's uh, eat some useful bacteria let's treat cancer this kind of stuff have you had a possibility to listen to other speeches uh, yesterday I joined the, the health track where we were talking about personalized nutrition so Lars from the Bosch uh, startup lab he was talking about how uh, consumer appliances are being developed for um, yeah using personalized nutrition strategies to deliver personalized food products for consumers, bringing healthier uh, solutions for the consumer's kitchen. And that was very interesting and very aligned to what we are doing at Yoga to Me. And, uh, and it's very exciting to see that uh, personalization is very near. It's not something that we will have in 10 years. Much sooner than that, we will start having uh, solutions like that coming up into the market about your startup a bit more just got curious where are you physically situated so we are based here in stockholm uh, we have our office at the ag2 health hub which is a health hub for digital health um, yeah, startups and uh, as i said we started the last year uh, here in stockholm and we have been based actually both here and in denmark so we were part of the plus impact accelerator with singularity nordics and uh, danske banken last year and also part of the Antler First Nordic cohort. So we have been moving around and uh, right now we are in a very early phase, prototype, developing our prototype, getting our proof of concept ready and um, yes, basically that's where we are. <laughs> and I think that Stockholm is a very interesting place to be, very innovative, very supportive to start up. We have a very supportive ecosystem here. That definitely sounds like we should explore more into Stockholm startup ecosystem. Hopefully, one day we'll do a special episode of uh, Tribecast at Stockholm. Thank you very much, Elena, for having time for this interview. Of course, I wish you all the luck with uh, growing your startup further and hope to see you in the future on the coming events. Thank you. It was a pleasure to have a talk with you all. And last but not the least, we are having the CEO of Arctic Startup. We are wrapping up the Arctic 15 uh, first edition of Stockholm with this special interview with this very special guy. Thank you very much, Jan, for having time for this interview. It was a great event for me. But before we talk about event, let's introduce you to our listeners, because some of them have seen your photos. Some of them have seen posts about you. Of course, pretty much everybody heard about you being the new CEO. But who are you? Well, I'm Jan Ameri, born and raised in Finland, and uh, I've been an entrepreneur for more than 21 years. And uh, I started in 1998, we, we did it like a website, 3D animations, and then we moved into mo mobile gaming or cross-media gaming with SMS and television and internet combination. I did those stuff like 20 plus years ago, mobile stuff, then I've been doing other stuff like a health related startup which converted into gaming company and uh, then been in import business a little bit in the entertainment business and then then i had my was it like fourth company or fifth company going on and then it was like a startup and uh, then it didn't go so well and then i just i've been reading i had been reading news or startup news from 2009 10 11 something like that and then I saw, oh, they were looking for volunteers for 2012 RT15, which was the second edition. I said, oh, I've been going to so many events. Maybe it's interesting to see how it looks from the inside of the event. 
And then I went there and I was volunteering. It was fun and I enjoyed it. And then two weeks later, the founders shut down the whole company. They announced that they shut down the company. I said, okay, wow, whatever. And then they gave, the, one month later, they gave the company to the guys who were working there, Greg and Dimitri. And then I started asking them. They start, took over the media side. And then, hey, are you guys going to do Arctic 15? I want to volunteer again. And they were busy with the media, writing news. And I they keep bugging them, hey, are you going to do the Arctic 15? I want to volunteer. And at some point, they got sick of my requests. And they said, okay, Jan, you look so interested about this. Are you going to do it? I said, okay, let me think about it. And then I had my previous start, just like shutting it down or putting in a pause. I said, okay, whatever, I'll do it. And then that's how I become the event director for Arctic 15. We did the first one, 2014, so that's like six, six years ago. Mm-hmm. And now we've been doing And then they asked me to join as a partner after the first one, basically. All right, so basically it all started from your interest. And I should say that this event has raised quite a lot of interest because the basic question was why to go to Stockholm if the event is successful in Helsinki. So why did you do that? Well, over the years, as we've been fine-tuning and improving our success formula in Helsinki, obviously, and focusing on the matchmaking, when international guests have come and they've experienced something new, that, hey, we need something like this, in our city or in our country and these requests have been like every year coming from different places and quite many of those actually came from Stockholm. It's a surprise for us because Stockholm has a great ecosystem, a lot of big players, a lot of companies, but not like this matchmaking focused startup event exists so we can then we're okay, blah blah blah, waiting, listening and then at some point so many and okay then we just okay why don't we try and like the scouting then I spent like one year about talking to various people in the Stockholm ecosystem if we would bring what would be the right angle to come right time to come and like that, that and then it took like one year of preparation then okay let's do it and then we focused the idea was that we will focus more on like a scale up and growth companies not so much on the early stage because there's many great early stage startup events here already and then we can, okay, let's go for like an Arctic 15 Stockholm Nordic growth as a team and focus more on the growth, but of course, and then invite a lot of international investors in. And that was pretty much what we were able to achieve. We thought, our target, okay, let's aim for a few hundred people the first year, and we actually, we had more than 550 resistance, and I think it was like 170 investors, and more than 100 of those investors were actually non-Swedish investors. I heard them. It's not a fact, but like uh, some of the local who've been around here in the Stockholm ecosystem, they said uh, I don't. They said that maybe no, no ever startup event had had more than 100 international investors in Stockholm before. So I, that's the first time we're doing and did it from the Helsinki. So we're quite happy and surprised about also and the reception of the event from the locals and other who been here. It's been quite really positive so far. I would say that my feeling about the event corresponds with what you're saying because all the startups and investors I talk to say that it's a very good range of startups towards investors. It's very diverse scene, so you have uh, startups are mostly Finnish and Swedish, but the investors are all over Nordics, and I've met some German people and Polish people. So that's that sounds interesting. Um, so it's second day; it's almost done. If you look back on those two days, how do you feel? What has been achieved besides this startup investor range? And if I may ask, what's the thing which you feel that you still haven't done, though you planned to? Well, overall, of course, really happy that we were able to get all these people to join. And then they had, I would say that they, a lot of local people, they get a whole new experience, which they haven't experienced in a startup event before. Mm-hmm. So that's, I would say that because maybe we... Because we were a little bit under the radar, not so big promotion, focus on getting good quality people in for the first time. And I think we made like a positive impression that could build ground if you want to do it again here. And like from the investors, we have some even flew in from Canada, from US, from France. So it was quite international, actually, the investors lot also. And also startups from Baltics came. Yeah. All right. That's... That does sound good. Um, about the uh, stage part of the event, I managed to hear a few speeches and one panel full, not to mention a few parts of coming and leaving. That was interesting and that was quite diverse. 
Um, how would you name the main focus of this event? 